Joining me now, Democratic strategist Don Calloway, former Strategic Communications Director for Hillary Clinton, Adrian Elrod, NBC News Think contributor, Sophia Nelson, the author of E Pluribus One, and Republican strategist, Lauren Zelt. Uh, so with a welcome to all of you, it's good to see you. And Sophia, you're a Republican, but mostly a critic of this president. How do you view the support that was voiced by those at the White House on Friday and that we saw in that piece just now? Well, look, Alex, this country was founded on the notion of e pluribus unum, out of many one, and it's the many that we're losing grasp of at the moment. Conservatives, liberals, black, white, gay, straight, you know, Jewish, Christian, et cetera, et cetera. That's what makes our country great. So these young people have every right to be conservative. They have every right to be African-American and conservative. They have every right to like Donald Trump if they want to, just as I have a right to be a centrist, moderate Republican who does like this Trump, who's a never Trumper and proudly so, and that's what makes our country great. So I have no problem with them being there and, and believing in what they believe in. We just need to start respecting each other's differences and and doing so in a civil manner. Yeah, to that point, Adrian, your, your take on the argument there that the teenagers made and also Sophia's point there. Yeah, look, I agree with Sophia. I mean, we need to have more tolerance in this country for people's uh, different political viewpoints, but at the same time, um, with all due respect to these young African-American teen, teens and, and young people, I don't understand how um, an African-American in this country can be so uh, strongly supportive of Donald Trump, given the fact that he has tried to use racism uh, and re divisive rhetoric to further divide this country. So they certainly have the right to do um, and believe and support who they want to believe in, in terms of political leaders. But um, I'm just I just don't understand how anybody um, can, you know, who is African-American can support him. Don, what do you make of all this? You know, there are legitimate black and conservative Republican thinkers and scholars and thought leaders in this country. I'm sitting on a panel right now with one of them is Sophia Nelson. I know Liz Copeland. I know Michael Steele. I know Thomas Sowell. I know Jerron Smith at the White House. These were not the people in this White House. Unfortunately, uh, being misguided, being without an intellectual mooring has no race. And uh, the president and his handlers seem to have found a group of young people who don't really are, are, are looking for an intellectual and ideological identity. But let's be very clear. These were not the uh, conservative African-American thought leaders of this country because mm -hmm. we know who those people are and they were not in that room. Lauren, we had uh, the president last week proudly announcing that he was a nationalist. Take a listen to this. Well, they have a word. It sort of became old fashioned. It's called a nationalist. And I say, really, we're not supposed to use that word. You know what I am? I'm a nationalist, okay? I'm a nationalist. I said the other day, I'm not a globalist. I'm a nationalist. And they said, oh, that's so terrible. Terrible. Do Republicans cringe when the president uses this word, Lauren? I mean, do you think at times he is confusing being a nationalist with being patriotic or being a patriot? Yeah, I, I cringed when I heard that, um, to be honest with you. Look, there's, there's nothing wrong with being someone who um, loves their country, supports their country, and is very patriotic. But I think we have to consider the historical um, affiliation that, that, that the word nationalist um, brings up. And when I heard that at the rally, I just thought, I, it, it, it's, I struggle with hearing words like that because it's hard to say that rhetoric like that isn't connected to a lot of the violence that we're seeing in our country today. I understand understand that the president may feel that it's it's red meat at a rally and, and it gets a lot of cheers, but he also has a responsibility for being president of all Americans. And a word like that just isn't serving us well at all. I'm curious your thoughts, the implication on all this, uh, the use of the word nationalist, Sophia, and the fact that even last year in the wake of Charlottesville, the immediate wake, that the president did not denounce those white nationalists who went on the attack there. Look, there is no doubt that this president is a master at code speech and dog whistles and all the things, and then he feigns ignorance. Oh, I didn't know that there was such a thing as a white nationalist. Really, Mr. President? A couple of them worked for you, one of them named Steve Bannon. But at the, at, the, at, at, the, at the end of the day, I think that we are in a crisis, Alex, and the word nationalist has, as she said, deep historic roots in other nations as well as here that are not very positive. We shouldn't confuse tribalism 
with patriotism. They're mm. very different, and do, we need to have that conversation. Do, do you, Adrian, think, as, as I was asking Lauren, do you think the president is just confusing these terms, nat nationalism with patriotism? And to that end, um, here's what the president said at the UN last month. Take a listen to this. We reject the ideology of globalism, and we embrace the doctrine of patriotism. What is your take on this? Look, my take, Alex, I'm, I'm only chuckling here because some on the far right have tried to say, oh, he means when he says nationalism, he means patriotism. No, he doesn't. He knows exactly what he's doing. He's a master with words. He knows exactly what he needs to do to stoke his base. And I think that Donald Trump has a real you know, I guess to an extent conflict on his hands because on the one hand, when he tries to strike a more conciliatory tone, um, whether he's speaking at the White House or is he issuing a statement, when he gets in front of these crowds at his rallies, many of whom, frankly, are racist and white, white nationalists, he gets in front of them and he cannot help himself because he knows what it takes to really excite and energize his base in that crowd. Um, so. I don't think he's confusing his words at all. I think he knows exactly what he's doing, and he knows what, exactly what he's doing nine days before the midterm elections. Okay. You guys may not go anywhere, because after the commercial break, I'm going to talk to you about something else. We're going to talk about false flag warnings and the dangers that they pose to America.